Hey everyone, happy live Thursday, here we are. Um, maybe ever so slightly lower energy today because I'm just not 100%, but because I was so excited about what I wanted to talk to you about, I seriously think that it's going to give me plenty of energy to kind of keep on going for the stretch um, that we're talking about. Um, we've had a kind of a miserable old week this week in, in Ireland here, weather-wise. Here we go. Hi from Western New York. Oh, I love seeing you all pop in. Um, but it was, we've been having a lot of fun. So it's been very, very exciting to get started again. Last week when I spoke with you on Thursday, it was our first week back and we were all a little low energy. I was kind of talking about the idea that was a bit like restarting an engine and um, this week we all popped in and it felt like somebody had turned on the switch um hey from california chris we've got eileen from virginia lovely to see you all there's liz hi and we've got someone from germany ontario canada wow we have got a great collection we've got monica from utah there i uh, lovely to see all of your faces um, and i spot a couple of faces of people who did the test knitting for this. So the sweater I'm wearing today is our brand new sweater. Liz, who is there, and Monica, who also popped up. There may be some other ones that I'm not recognizing, but you all helped test this, and thank you so much. There was also some really, really beautiful photographs from you, which I'm going to share in the next couple of days, so people can see all of the different modifications you can make for this particular sweater. Hey, Doug from Netherlands and Lisa from Texas, Pittsburgh. We've got Italy here. Oh my gosh, we have got a very international crew watching us today, which is really fun. This particular sweater I am I'm really excited about because it was one that seemed to have gotten delayed a few times. And I'm going to tell you the whole story of how it all started because it started as most of these start with with a swatch couple of I could say a couple of months ago it's actually earlier this year I got started with just swatching with both the Blasta and also looking at both Cumulus and Caprito from Manos de Uruguay um, but the last when I was working with them it was for quilted feather and as I pulled it out it was actually Laura who said they'd be lovely together so she started swatching first of all for the mizzen scarf which she actually released earlier this year and then I started thinking about the fact that brioche would be really nice with it as well. May also be Laura, but both of us definitely were into the brioche vibe for it. And so we started swatching and it became a little bit of an addiction because we kept pulling all of the different yarn colors and combining to see what the two of them came together like. And it just, we just couldn't wait to actually get it on the needles. But because the yarn was so, squishy and so lovely when they were combined together and also because brioche itself can be quite challenging for people i wanted to keep the sweater itself relatively simple and all about the details so everything with brioche less is more i think because brioche's decreases or if our increases if you're doing increases are by themselves like just add so much interest that you really don't need to do a whole pile more so i wanted to keep the actual sweater um, a little bit simpler so that the both the brioche and the fact of all the decreases in brioche could kind of hold their own it also meant that um if you wanted to make changes as you went along it's a little bit more straightforward if there isn't a lot of other things happening with it so that's that's kind of the background to where where we started so it began as my travel sweater um it was a couple of months ago when i was or this, this summer when i was traveling i started it because i knew there was going to be a big section of brioche first of all and when i was sizing it i wanted it you can see i've done a cropped version so it's a little shorter so i'm wearing over a dress here which i really quite like the the length of it for over a dress or you can still wear it for if you've got a higher waisted pants and things like that a shorter version works very well. I know several of our testers added a little bit of length and because it is done um, just with no shaping on the body, it's really easy to adjust as you're going along. So you will get to see some of the testers versions with a little bit more length. Do bear in mind that if you opt to add length, 
just pick the next size up in terms of the kit to make sure you've got enough yarn because that's where you're going to run into problems is you could end up running short in yarn if you add length. Other than that, there is no difficulty once you've got enough yarn. I also wanted it, I see it's nice and wide. I wanted a kind of a wide swingier effect and the brioche is knit fairly loosely so that it's, it's allowed to really have a nice bit of bounce to it. The yarn combinations, which I'll talk a little bit more about later on, really plays very nicely with it being both very warm, but not too heavy because of the two yarns that we ended up combining. So once you come up to here, it's then, it's actually got set in sleeves, which is a little bit unusual for doing brioche. And it was, it brought up a couple of challenges from a design point of view that I hadn't thought about as I was working it. So it meant that I took my time designing it to make sure that every section made a lot of sense as you went through it. So we divided the arms. And as I was saying, with brioche, decreases are so beautiful in themselves. Like this is just decreases in brioche, but they looked so nice that I set them in and several stitches in from the edge so you can really see them. And that is decreased up to the width of the shoulders so that you've got the width of your actual shoulders. It's not a drop shoulder when it's actually got a set in sleeve. There's a little bit of short rows across the top to slope it, which I do detail in uh, brioche because it's a little bit different, but they're also fitted in places that it's easy to turn. So don't let it intimidate you. And then you join the shoulders and the sleeves are picked up and you work a couple of wedges of short rows to curve the top and then the rest is down. But this is also where like at the front, you can see again, the decreases for the neck by themselves are the main feature of what you see up here. But by just moving them in a couple of stitches from the edge, you can see that they can really stand out and look really interesting on the sweater. As you can see, I love, I love the details. I'm all about the details and the small little features that really make a difference when you're knitting because they're both fun to knit and they really make the sweater at the end of the day. Decreases on the sleeves I've got up along the top. You can see because I love the decreases in brioche, I put them on the top rather than hiding them on the bottom. So the bottom part is just plain old brioche and then the decreases are on each side of the top where you can actually see them. Again, because it's top down, if you want it longer or you want it a little looser, you can just vary the decreases you're going down. Just keep trying it on because it's all done seamlessly in one piece. So you can just keep trying it on and making sure that you like the way it works. This is one of my favorite neck edgings. It's just done um, with one by one ribbing where it's folded over and then the live stitches are just sewn in place under here. So it's got plenty of stretch, but it really does fit in with the rest of it. And with brioche, because it's got so much stretch in itself, you have to be very careful that all of your edges will stretch as much as the brioche. So we've got tubular bind off at the cuffs, sewn bind off where it's folded down on the top. The bottom of this is an Italian, um, beg your pardon, this wasn't Italian, it was alternating cable cast on back and forth where it looks like one by one ribbing and it flows very smoothly. So. This is all about the details. So if you're getting just the pattern, you will have links to each of the tutorials. If you're new to brioche or if you're new to short rows or the two combined, then there's also a workshop where there's videos where every single stage of this is detailed all the way through. So as I was knitting each stage, I took my camera out and I took a video of that section. So it's basically like you're sitting over my shoulder the whole way through watching me knitting it. And you get to go either download those videos if you want to, slow them down, speed them up. There's also closed captions so that you can see the text underneath as well if you want to see what I'm talking about as I'm going through it. So there's, there's so many different things here that it should really, really help you get to the, um, to the end game of getting the sweater out and being really happy with the sweater that you're knitting. If you buy the workshop, you do not need to buy the pattern separately because it comes combined with the pattern in it. So if you want just the pattern, if you know how to do all the techniques, then just jump straight into the pattern. You won't need the workshop, but it's there for anyone who is either new to brioche or new to some of the techniques or just wants the reassurance of being able to watch someone knit through so that you know that you're on the right track as you're going through. Sometimes all you need is just a, um, I suppose, not, not so much a reminder, but a um, reinforcement that what you're doing is correct as you're going through. Um, 
Liz is, ladies, you love to knit and wear it. Oh, good. Have you gotten much use out of it, Liz? It looks so nice on you. Really nice. Um, and I think most of you went for kind of a kind of the oversized fit, which I've kind of suggested. I've given a good bit of positive ease because it's designed to be a little looser rather than tight. But I, I think you added in a little bit of length when you were working it, Liz. But that's, again, not a problem. Just keep an eye on yarn usage. It's about the only thing that you run into. One of the questions I did have, actually, that someone was asking a little bit about blocking and whether if you've got something which has got um, a fluffier yarn like the mohair in it, if you have to block it any differently. And the answer is... Um, for me, I didn't do it any differently. Like when you actually wash something that's got a little bit of fluff, it looks somewhat flatter as you're blocking it, but as it dries, it, it folds back up again to the way it was. So there shouldn't really be any reason to, to block it any more differently. With brioche, because it is so stretchy, um, you need to, when, you're, when you are blocking, don't stretch it out or anything like that. You're just smoothing the fabric is all you're doing. Monica, you agree it was so much fun to knit and you added length as well. Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing I saw with the testers was a little bit of length being added to the sweater. Um, but other than that, it kind of it was you know fairly straightforward. And none of you, the testers did not have the workshops going through. So all of the testers would have done it from the pattern alone. So if, you're, if you've done brioche before, then the pattern standing by itself should do the job it's really just if you want the reassurance or if, if there's a lot of new techniques it's probably the best way of making sure that you get all the support that you need as you're working through it um, so in terms of yarn we're going to have a little look at the combinations of yarn that we put together and give you a small bit of an idea of some of the different yarns that we've put through in on the website because as I said, Laura and me spent quite a bit of time looking at the two, the, the yarns and how they could fit together. And because we've got both a very woolly yarn that you, um, which is the Bloss Delight is going to be the base of it. It's, it's spun in Donegal and Donegal's yarns there, because they're woolen spun, they trap a lot of air into them, but it makes them very, very light. But it is, let me pull one of them up here. This is the Bloss to Light and the Nadur, which is the base color that's in this. So if I hold it up here, you can see it's a single ply yarn and it's kind of a slight thick and thin quality to it. And it's relatively delicate because of the fact that when you've got wool and spun, it doesn't have a lot of inherent strength. So that means that you do have to be fairly careful with it. When the garment's finished, it's, it's, it is plenty strong. But sometimes as you're knitting with it, it can have a little bit, um, how can I put it? It needs, care, it needs some minding. But that is one of the beauties of when you combine it with one of the mohair yarns, because mohair is actually a very strong fiber. So, but it's, it's a brushed mohair, they're lace weight, super light. And when you combine it with that, the mohair gives a load of bloom and it really, really kind of fills in the whole spaces around the stitch, but it doesn't add a lot of density to it. So it's, and it adds a lot of strength. So the two of those combined to me is kind of a match made in heaven. You've got the light, really airy woolen spun feel of the Bloster, of the Bloster light. And then the mohair gives it a bit of strength, a bit of fluff. So it's, it kind of gives you the, the best of both worlds to a certain extent. So we're going to take a look at some of the yarn combinations. And I think Laura may be somewhere close by and she was going to give me a hand and hand some of the colors in as we work through. And I think we have the swatches here, although this first one, I don't really need the swatch. So this one is the Bloss Delight in Nadur, which I'm wearing. And this, <laughs> this is the Caprito <laughs> Tiza. And the two of those are what I'm wearing together. So you can see that they're obviously not identical colors. And when we're putting the com combinations together, we were trying to get things that either were very close or the qualities of each kind of enhanced them and they worked well together. But I w it's always quite surprising. The Caprito, even though it's a very, very light yarn, the color really comes through when you're knitting because we discovered that like with some of the tester knits, there's a second version, and I'll pull this in here. This color is the primrose. Prim, primrose. 
So this is the primrose and we've also paired that with the Nadur. And you can see that's obviously much pinker. And one of the testers that put those together, it was really beautiful and it came, but it comes out quite pink that the pink in the lace weight really does tend to dominate it, it kind of surprisingly so actually um but yes swatching is here we go i'm being reminded by laura behind the camera because only half of my brain appears to be working today to pull up the swatches so i'm going to hand over the teaser and the Nadur. you can see because i'm wearing those and I'll move the teaser over. So these two together, we, we, we were very good and we did all of the swatching because there was no other way to know for sure what the colors would look like. So this is the primrose combined with the Nadur. So you can kind of, if I send it back as well, you can probably see because the Capriccio is hand dyed, there's variations in the color going through it and it gives you that sense of very slight variation. Same with what I'm wearing. You can kind of see a little bit of color variation as it's going through, which of course is all because of the fact that it's, um, yeah, it's, it's hand dyed. Um, Lady Doc, allergy to mohair, do I have other suggestions for yarn? Um, one possible one that we carry is Cumulus. Cumulus is a brushed alpaca, so it's going to have that same airiness. It is slightly heavier. So you probably want to swatch and make sure and possibly make a little adjustments and gauge, but it's going to have the same fluffy effect, but it is, it's not, it's not a light lace weight, it's a heavier lace weight. So it's going to be slightly thicker. You may also, the two combined kind of comes to a kind of a light DK gauge. So, or a, a heavy sports weight. So something like a newer sport, if you have some, you could try swatching with that and see how the gauge works. But you'd need to swatch, see if you like the fabric and see what the gauge looks like. Um, but yeah, when you're combining yarns like that, it's uh, even though it's a fingering weight and a lace weight, because of the mohair, the, it, it folds out a lot. So it actually gives you a slightly thicker fabric than you're expecting. It kind of, it's a little deceptive is the best way to put it. So you may want to go heavier for yarns than, than you think, but we kind of think about the heavy sports weight to light DK is the range that's probably most likely to work. Um, I'll move these over here. We move on to the next one here. Hang on, I'm going to look at, make sure I've got my swatches ready here. So we're going for a gold color now. This is ore in the Blasta Light. And it's come and this one we're combining it with the sensei mustard this is also mohair but it's a mohair silk blend so it's ito sensei and or so again they're not obviously identical colors but when you hold it up you can see that the sensei actually has quite an impact on the colors of it that the the darker color does really show through I find with a kind, of, and I mean also the ore almost feels like it sits a little in the background and the fluff seems to be the more dominant color, which that took me by surprise anyway when we were looking at it, that until you swatch it up, you don't realize that. Even more obvious, I think, on camera to you when you're looking at yarn combinations, um, the colors are a little more obvious than when you're knitting it up. But you can do all sorts of interesting things with combinations of a kind of a fluffier yarn and a fingering weight. So we will move on to the next one. I don't have a swatch for this, but you can see the two combined. If you look at the mizzen scarf that Laura did, this is our Blast to Light in Leah, which is a light gray color. And this one is Capriccio again, and it's a marble color. And the color of these two is really, really pretty together. Again, slightly lighter, little bit of very, you can see there's a little bit of variation in the color going through that. So you're going to see that in the sweater as you're going through. So you will actually start getting a bit of variation um, because of this as you're, as you're running through it. I didn't alternate these yarns. Um, if you're worried, you can, but I, I think that might make it a little bit awkward because when I was working with these, what we ended up doing is we wound each of these separately and then we actually wound one cake with the two together so it was a little bit easier to work with so then you just had one giant cake with the two in a single strand uh, together because the mohair is so light it kind of tends to twist around the other one they quite happily twist it up together and it's a little bit more straightforward than trying to pull from two separate skeins so that's probably the easiest way to work with them combined 
So I'll keep going with some of our yarn colors here. So we've got, this is, I actually love this color. This is Farragut, which is the Irish for sea. And you can see it's kind of a dark green with little tints of purple and mustard and just, it's really interesting. Um, and this one is the ultramarine color that we've paired it with. So the two of these, again, there's a bit of variation in the colors here. So this took us a little while, if I remember correctly, to actually combine them because we just, we loved this color and we weren't sure which one was going to really enhance it, but we were happiest with this in the end. And so let me, this is the two of these knitted up together. So it does, it comes up a little bit darker with small bits of the Farragut showing through. So it's just, it's, it's a darker color, but it's just really, really beautiful. And it's got a lot of depth because you've got those two colors running through it. So if, if I was going to knit another one, I did, I, I might do this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the problem. Every time you knit a swatch, you want to knit up a new sample, but there's only so many samples you can end up knitting up. But yeah, that one is your Farriga and the Ultramarine. <laughs> My brain's not working very well today. Uh, yeah, Farragut and Ultramarine, that's right, yeah. Uh, moving on, we've got another green. This is much brighter green. This is emerald. It is emerald, yes. Pool. Pool green. And this one is pool green. So this is a kind of a darker, more muted green. This is a lot more vibrant, the two of these together. And we have our swatch coming up here. So again, this is also, it's a, it's a brighter than the last green we had, but it has got the emerald. It's kind of given just a slightly darker tone by having the pool green running through it. You can see the two of these, and move this up so you can see them all together. Uh, pool green and emerald is, yeah, it's also a very, very pretty green. I think it's, I think it's actually even nicer than the two ones individually. I think that really makes a nice one. Another one, a hard one to combine because they weren't exactly right. And until you swatch them, you're not going to know what it looks like. So there was a lot of swatching happened with this particular project. Um, here we go. We've come to our last combination. And this one is Barak. And we combined it with denim, which is really it is actually a very this is probably my second favorite i think after the pool one um, i think these two are just gorgeous together um, again you can kind of it actually does make the whole thing look a little bit like denim with a little bit of wearing in it because it's got small bits of lighter colors running through so that is your pool green and the denim so it was for anyone who actually missed it earlier on can i actually grab the capriccio yeah um, the two uh, backup fluffy yarns that we were doing are the Ito Sensei, and that one is uh, brushed mohair and silk, and this one is brushed mohair and polyamide. So I think, what's the percentage? of This is 20% polyamide, and this one is 40% silk. So there's actually quite a bit of silk on this. But they actually have quite a, you know, a pretty similar feel as you're working through them, the same kind of weight. They're very very light lace weight but for a, a fluffier yarn it kind of you get you get more density and more color depth to it than you expect with a light lace weight because when you're holding it it's a very fine yarn but for whatever reason it just it fills out and it really really holds its own when it's combined with another um with another yarn so we, I'm really, uh, I'm very excited to eventually be able to share it. There was a slight delay with the whole project because while I was taking my time and kind of working my way through all the different design things that were going on, the, new, the Blasta light, our Blasta from Donegal, there was a delay of a couple of months. So this was originally meant to be, I think a couple of months ago where it got launched. And then we um, ended up, oh, I seem to have lost audio apparently. Can you hear the audio now? Is everyone gone for everyone? Um, okay, if the audio is still gone, hopefully it's not. Uh, but I'm actually kind of winding up, so I might bid you all adieu. Um, if you have any more questions, pop them up here on the live and I am very happy to answer them after the fact, um, whether it's about the project or sizing or anything along those lines, I'm, I'm very happy to share them with you. If there's another question, that you have um, as before I finish up here, just pop it up there and um, I'm happy to answer it. Oh good, the audio is working for everyone. I'm very happy to hear that. 
I'm always very sad when I ended up with uh, with parts of the audio getting disappearing as we go along. But yeah, I am. I'm so excited that we actually have all of this in place and I can share it with you because it's been a bit like trying to keep a Christmas present under wraps until the summertime that you really want to share with someone because we've all been very excited about this particular project. Um, I am also going to have um, tomorrow there will be a vlog that is going to be coming out. So make sure you have drop over to my YouTube subscribe if you want to make sure that you're the first to hear about it. It's going to be all about brioche. There'll be a little more talking through the details of this sweater as well. So yeah, make sure you're subscribing over in YouTube so that you can keep an eye on all of that and you won't miss anything. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I've been having so much fun talking about this. And if you need any more details, we can always talk about it next week in our live. Same time, Thursday, 2.30. Um, am I using two strands to do the brioche? Yes, the brioche is two strands, a light fingering weight woolen spun, woolen spun yarn and a lace weight mohair together. So there's two yarns to kind of give you both a very light woolly layer and then also the very, very fluffy more light and bouncy one to, to fill in the brioche is the way I kind of think of it but they're worth together all the way through you're not alternating and it's just a single color all the way through so just one color but two yarns held together for the project all right bye everyone thank you